Zhong Yang Sheng Shi. Zhong is the center. It used to be written something like this, and then sort of central. It was a picture of a banner. Unlike a lot of popular etymologies that say it's an arrow piercing the target, it's actually a picture of the sort of banner or standard that a horseman might carry at the center of a, a large um, a cavalry. So he would be in amongst them, and people would use him to sort of say center the center on where they were going. This, Zhong, this is also the Zhong in Zhong Guo. Zhong Yi, Chinese medicine, all this Zhong here. This Yang character here is interesting. Yang means region, and it's sort of like the central region. Sheng, Sheng is to produce, and here we have sort of some sort of plant or something emerging from the ground. Shi. This character here is Shi, means dampness. You have the water radical, you have a mouth, something that's actually opening up. Then you have this rope here, or these, these silk threads, and then you have fire. What's interesting here is the animal that's related to the spleen is the snake. And the word for snake uh, originally in our language comes from this Norse word, snooker. The snooker actually means a, a rotten rope, some sort of rotten rope, because the snake looks like a rotten rope. When you think about your own kind of visceral impression of, of, a, of a snake as it sheds its skin or as it's sitting there, it looks like kind of a rotten rope or something like that. Those of you who are um, familiar with Emily Dickinson's poems, there's a good book of her writings. The poem about a snake is, and it goes, he likes a boggy acre, a floor too cool for corn. But when a child and barefoot, I more than once at morn has seen, I thought, a whiplash on Brady in the sun. When stooping to secure it, it wrinkled and was gone. So it's kind of a common, I think, theme there. But here we have literally this rope kind of breaking apart. And if you think about the, uh, the ancients or people who lived at this time, if you have rope, it takes a long time to weave all these individual strands together to make yourself a nice rope. And what is the one thing that is going to wreck your rope? Dampness, exactly. If it gets damp, it's ruined. What happens? A little mouth opens in it somewhere, and it's as if it burns. It's as if there's some sort of fire or something that, that takes place there. And the, the Chinese recognize that these path pathogenic influences, like damp, had an effect not just on the things that they were keeping with them and trees and whatnot that they were rotting the damp. They realized that they also had an effect on their bodies. So this, and we'll see as we go through the lecture, this, this pathogenic influence of, of dampness is primarily what the spleen wards off in the body. And we'll go through some of the biochemical kind of mechanisms for, for how that works there. But they realized that dampness wasn't just something that was sort of cold and wet. It was something that caused inflammation. What, what we would uh, typically think of as sort of rheumatic or rheumatologic inflammation. That word there, rheum, Room refers to flow, it means the flow of water. So rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatism, these were things that were things where people realized that the, the flow of fluid in the body was no longer working well, and then there was this inflammation and pain that would occur in the joints. These lines that we're looking at are from chapter five of the Yellow Emperor's classic, the yin yang yin xiang da lun, which is the yin yang mutual kind of reciprocity the great treatise of the mutual re reciprocity of, of yin and yang. So that first line is zhong yang sheng shi. The central region produces dam. So if you're a feng shui uh, professional, that would be the that would be sort of the primary path, the pathogen that you want to sort of keep out of that, that central region there, because it tends to uh, it tends to uh, build up there. The next line is this. which literally means damp produces earth, produces sort of dirt. And you've probably seen this, you'll see this in your driveway, you'll see it, see it even out here in the scholar's garden. Where there's damp, where there's water that hangs out in those little nooks of, of stones and whatnot, the material tends to break down, tends to break down all the way and form actually kind of dirt there. So if you walk out and look at where water will just sort of naturally settle in the courtyard, you'll see that the, the dirt uh, tends to kind of accumulate there. And then the next line here is this Gan Sheng Tu, or rather Gan Sheng Tu. I'm sorry, 
that's hip liner. The, the next line was tu sheng ga. The earth produces this ga, this, this flavor here, which is usually translated as sweetness. And it was originally just a picture of a, a mouth with something in it, so it denoted something savory there. If you think about that tu, tu is like earth, where do you produce sort of the food that you eat? Where do you feed your cattle? Where do you get the sweet milk and the butter and all those things that you enjoy eating? They come from this valley where the waters tend to accumulate, where the soil gets really deep, and it produces this kind of things that were good to eat. High up on the mountains where it's high and dry, there's really not much in the way of, of good things to eat. But if you're sort of if you're between mountains and you're in this rich, fertile valley there, there's gonna be a lot of nice things to eat, a lot of nice things to put in your in your mouth. And then it says, Gan Shang Pi, then the sweet flavor produces the spleen. So here we have, now we're, now we're coming to the meat of the matter as far as our lecture goes. This character here, the Pi, the spleen. This character is consisting of two radicals. The radical on the left is originally this flesh radical. And if you've ever cut a big piece of meat uh, on the side across the the panicles of muscle there, it looks a lot like this. These individual fascicles of meat there. Ro, that's this flesh right over here. This piece over here is, is less understood. It was actually the left hand reaching for a common eating vessel. So in the early in the production of the early Chinese language, they were careful to distinguish between ritual objects and common objects. Ritual objects, like the, the types of eating vessels that you would use during a, a ceremony or at a, at, a, at, a, at a feast, you would always reach for with your right hand, with your right hand. But at home, when you were relaxing, when you were just eating, you could reach for it with your, with your left hand, you eat with either hand, it wasn't a big deal. So this is the flesh, this is the organ, or the, the viscera, that is somehow like this, the sort of everyday, everyday kind of meal, meal taking, meal making. I'm just going to kind of first introduce you to this passage so you're familiar with it. And then we'll start looking at the, the biochemical uh, model, sort of a modern understanding of this, and see how it relates back to these individual lines here. Pi Shang Ro. The spleen produces flesh produces this, this meat or, or this flesh. And then the next line is Ro Shang Fei. And the flesh somehow produces the lungs. Now, this is where the image of the snake, which is the animal that's related to um, the, the spleen, is kind of interesting to keep in mind. When we think about our, our own bodies, we have arms and legs. That's the main difference between us and a snake. The other thing is, we have bones for our arms and legs, and the snakes don't. Some snakes have what are called vestigial hind legs, where they'll have a, a pair of legs at the back, just sort of a few bones there. But for the most part, they've given up all of, the, all of their skeletal bones. They kept the axial skeleton, and they kept adding on ribs. So you've got this long body. If you have a skeleton of a snake, it's this long system of vertebra, and then just ribs going all the way back, all the way back to the tail. That's interesting here because the snake, when you look at it, it just looks like a long rope of muscle, doesn't it? But that long rope of muscle is actually encasing the rib cage. And when you think about your lungs, in order to take a breath, to inhale and exhale, in order for your lungs to do what they need to do, you need this rib cage. The rib cage is this system of kind of circular bones, but it also has all these muscles that, that go through it. And anyone who's uh, you know eaten ribs knows that that's one of the sort of tastiest pieces of the, of the flesh to eat. So it's pi shang ro. The spleen produces the flesh, and the, and the flesh somehow produces the, the lungs. Now we'll uh, just go a couple more lines here. Is this making sense to us? And the last line we'll look at here is pi shang ko. 